Hi there, everyone. Here in the Student Success Center, we tend to get a lot of questions about people who want to go to physical therapy school and earn their DPT. A lot of people don't know where to start or what this might entail, so we wanted to make a video series that addresses many of the common questions we hear. In this video series, we will cover everything from introductions and what is a physical therapist to the application process and prerequisites to uh, interviews and actually going to school. So if you are somebody that is interested in becoming a physical therapist and earning your DPT, this is a great place to start. So let's go ahead and get started. This first video will just be an introduction into the physical therapy profession and where we might be able to find resources um, for becoming a PT or for other options that we might want. So first of all, what is a physical therapist? Physical therapists are licensed, doctoral trained health professionals who specialize in movement and treatment of various injuries, disabilities, and chronic physical conditions. Physical therapists have care roles from newborns to end of life care and are involved in preventative care, rehabilitation, and long-term care. Now, many of us growing up or in, in our life experience probably think of physical therapists as being in a clinic after you are injured and have a very one-dimensional role in the healthcare system. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. Physical therapists may work in a wide variety of settings and have many, many options for specialties. There are so many things that physical therapists can do. Some of these examples include, but are not limited to being in a hospital setting and treating people that are fresh out of surgery, whether that be cardiac rehab or directly after orthopedic surgery, etc. They may work in an outpatient facility, um, meaning the normal clinics that we see around campus, the places that you might do your internships, or your hours. They may work in home health where they go to patients' houses and they help them learn activities of daily living or they treat them if they are in acute care or shortly after surgery, such as if you get a a total hip replacement or a total knee replacement, etc. They may work in schools or with children specifically, maybe with um, specific neurological disorders such as cerebral palsy um, or in schools where um, physical therapy and just physical rehabilitation is needed. They can also work in corporate health and workplaces, um, part of um, specific company healthcare programs. They may work in sport and fitness performance. They may work in cardiac rehab and neurological rehab, um, especially for people who have suffered strokes or have other neurological disorders such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, um, or like I mentioned, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, et cetera, et cetera. They may work in pelvic health and women's health, specifically for um, people who are prenatal, perinatal, um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Or they may work in hippotherapy, which is using horses um, for therapy for especially children with um, autism or other spectrum disorders or people who may not be able to do normal therapy. There's aqua therapy. There are so many different types of physical therapy out there. So please don't think that the one clinic that you may have seen in your neighborhood is the limit to what you can do in this field. Now, one of the most important questions to ask before you start on this road is how do you know you want to be a physical therapist? Being a kinesiology major does not mean that you must become a physical therapist. We see this all the time in the Department of Kines where people come in and you tell somebody that you're a kines major and they immediately say, oh, you want to be a physical therapist? Um, which does not necessarily have to be the case. This is a very long road ahead. It's a very rewarding road ahead, but you should be sure that this is the profession that you want to do. Keep in mind that grad schools are expensive, they're time consuming because you have to get a bachelor's degree, you have to do your prerequisites, and then you have to do another three years for your actual DPT, your doctor of physical therapy, before you can become licensed. And then this is a career path um, that you need to invest your time in. You need to make sure that this is something that you want to do for the rest of your life. Uh, DPT programs and grad schools in general are extremely selective, so becoming a physical therapist is quite a commitment and not something that should be taken lightly or because you think that since you're a kines major, this is the direct career path for you. Your individual reasons for wanting to become a PT are yours alone, but it should go beyond I want to help people. Most people want to help people. Most people that are in a healthcare profession want to help people. But you need to ask yourself, why is it physical therapy specifically and not another healthcare field that I want to do in order to help people? Um, your reasons, like I said, should be yours alone. They should be specific to you, but also specific to the field itself. Um, and not just something, again, that you think you're pigeonholed into because your background is kinesiology. 
one of the things that we recommend here in the Department of Kinesiology is to shadow and do your observation first. Um, you want to quote unquote date the field before you decide you want to marry it. And some people may go shadow at a clinic and decide that this isn't the field or the profession for them. But with that being said, keep your options open, go spend some time in the field and see if this is really what you want to spend the rest of your life doing before you decide that you are going to take this 10 year plus career path ahead of you. Now, if you're somebody that has decided that DPT programs and physical therapy is not for you, but you want to learn what else you can do similar with your degree in kinesiology, there are many, many other options that you can choose other than being a physical therapist. Um, for instance, occupational therapy is something that is very adjacent to physical therapy, which requires a master's degree instead of a doctoral degree, and clinical experience is focused mostly on activities of daily living, speech, and other fine motor skills. You can also become a physical therapy or occupational therapy assistant, which is a two-year vocational program that many colleges offer, which allow you to work with therapists in implementing treatment plans. So you now are not necessarily the practitioner that is seeing patients and creating these treatment plans, but you are one of the people helping to facilitate this process and getting hands-on with patient experience. Other certifications may also allow you to work as a trainer or a coach that does light rehab. Um, examples of this include the Pain-Free Performance Specialist Certification, the PPSC, the CES or Corrective Exercise Specialist, MES, Medical Exercise Specialist, MET, Muscle Activation Technique Therapist, etc. So many of these may allow you to work in the realm of fitness and sport while also putting into practice some of these different rehab and corrective exercise plans without necessarily going Going the whole nine and going to get your doctorate. As well, orthotics and prosthetics technician certificates exist, orthopedic um, medical device sales or other ancillary rehab roles where, again, you may be part of the extra services that help alongside rehab without necessarily becoming the physical therapist practitioner. Many general um, FAQs may be found on this website right here. This is the APTA or the American Physical Therapy Association website. Um, this, inf this website is chock full of super helpful information and answers many, many, many of the frequently asked questions that we see. So please feel free to give this link a look and see if any of your answers are there. In the next video coming up, we will discuss researching schools, how to look for programs that you like, and other options that you should be looking for. So stay tuned and come back to the next video if you're interested in more information.